Hello, I greet you, and I greet you in the presence of the Most Holy Trinity, of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. We all know of many saints canonized by the Church, by the Catholic Church. Uh, if we have a look, say, at the updated martyrology, this is a list of the canonized saints and of the blessed as well. There are over 7,000 canonized saints and blessed currently venerated by the Church and whose cult is officially recognized and proposed to the faithful as models worthy of imitation. That's why the Church canonizes saints so that we can imitate them and imitate them in their ordinary life, in their ordinary virtues. If, say, a particular saint had an extraordinary charism, say, of working miracles, of bilocation, or any extraordinary cross, like the wounds, the stigmata, I mean, we don't imitate them in those things. We would imitate them in their virtuous life. How they loved God, how they sacrificed themselves to please God, how they deny themselves to win all temptations. That's why the Church presents us <clears throat> With, with, these, with these saints, canonized saints. Now, and we also know so. We know that there are many, many saints. And we also know that the greatest saint is Our Lady, the Mother of God, <clears throat> the Mother of God. As a matter of fact, we greet Our Lady with many titles. Take the litany, eh? say how many titles we give to Our Lady. Our Lady is one person, but we give her many titles. You know, Our Lady of Mount Carmel, Our Lady of the Rosary, you know, of Good Counsel, of Consolation, uh, or Mary, Consoler of the Afflicted, uh, Mary, 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 Untire of Knots. And as St. John Bosco used to call her, Mary, help of Christians. Now, to be exact, St. John Bosco was Italian, and he referred to her as Maria, Mary, Maria, Auxiliatrice, just one word, Maria Auxiliatrice, but referring to Mary as help of Christians. So, but, with every title we give to Our Lady, we always recognize her as our mother, our mother, Mary, our mother. We can also address her personally as Mary, my mother. Not necessarily always we can say, I mean, she is our mother, but I can, tell, can, can address her as my Mary, my mother, or my mother Mary. As we can say to God, God is our Father. Jesus himself taught us the Our Father, Our Father, eh? but I can tell him my Father as well, Abba, Abba. Eh? In Hebrew, Abba. So God, this is the point I am trying to raise, and I hope I shall be clear in today's talk enough because I am touching on some, you know, difficult, not difficult, but personal, personal points rather than uh, close relations with God. So, God is our Father, we agree. Mary, our Mother, we agree. And what about saints? I think, you have already come to the conclusion, I think, we are fond of all saints, all saints. But still, 
we have some particular and special saints. We can choose our favorite saints as we want. Choose any saint or saints that you want, no problem. Saints are in no way offended. Unlike us, sometimes we are so easily offended by a word, by a look, by a, by a comment, by a... Saints are never offended. These saints who are enjoying the beatific vision of the Most Holy Trinity, these saints help us a lot in our needs. As you well know, in these talks of mine, in these videos, I am telling you stories from the splendid life of St. John Bosco. And I am putting before you how much Don Bosco did to those who went to him and asked him for his help. He never refused anyone to help him. Not in the sense that he always gave them what they wanted. Many a time he performed miracles to heal sick people. But in some cases, he refused. He, eh? he refused to do that because it wasn't God's will. That is important. Now, so I ask today, I Don Bosco is not with us anymore here on earth. Today, and what I am saying about Don Bosco, I can apply it to anyone, all, all saints. The canonized saints are all in heaven. There is no canonized saint who is on earth. I ask today, once the saints are all in heaven, if we ask them, won't they help us? The answer is only one. Surely they help us, and help, they help us a lot. Many of you have a devotion to some saints and ask them for help. And this is my message today. How do you address them? I, will say, I said that Mary is our mother, God is our father, and the saints. If I had to ask each and every one of you, you would definitely tell me, and you would be saying perfectly well. For example, when you address to a particular saint, you tell him, Saint Anthony, Saint John Bosco, Saint George Preca, Saint Anne, Saint Therese, Saint Aloysius, Saint Thomas More, Saint Francis Xavier Cambrini. These are examples. But why we address them, we are aware or not that these are our brothers and sisters. You see my point, what, what my point is? God is our father, Mary is our mother, and saints are our brothers and sisters. But, so, this is my point. When we address them, eh, a person say, might, might lose something. So, that person refers to Saint Anthony. Do you? And do, are you aware that Saint Anthony is your brother? This is the point I am raising. Now these are things that you come to them when you go grow closer to God. You don't get them from books. You get them from experience. And I am speaking from experience, from my intimate union with God and with saints and with Our Lady. Are we aware that these saints are our brothers and sisters? That particular saint that you are speaking to, asking for help, is your brother or your sister? God is our father, as, our, as I have said, and Mary our mother. And so, we must, or better, we, we, we better be convinced that all saints are our brothers and sisters. Since every saint is my brother and my sister, I can call him or her by their name, simply by their name, by their name. 
I can address them by their name as if that saint and me were living in the same house. This means that I can address a saint both by calling him or her as saint or by mentioning only his or her name. I think now, by now, this message that I am passing on to you is clear enough. In case there is something unclear or you have any question, uh, whatever, even if you disagree with something that I, I say, please, there, are, there is the comment section under the video and you can pass on your comment. I always see all your comments and answer you as best as I can. And in case, if you disagree also with my answer, you can pass, post your comment again, and so on and so forth. No problem at all. I am never offended by what you say, and I am never annoyed in answering you. God forbid. <laughs> I would be displeasing God if I get annoyed <laughs> or somehow offended. Of course, now, connecting what I have, I have been saying about uh, saints. Of course, when we are in a public place, like a church, in a church, eh? we call saints by, the, by their title. For instance, St. Peter, St. Paul, St. Andrew. But when we talk to them in a familiar way, we can call them just by their name, as they used to be called when they were still in the world. I have Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. Look, Jesus, we don't say Saint Jesus, Mary. All right, we can say Saint Mary, but, but we, we often say just Mary for Our Lady. Eh? Joseph, Saint Joseph. But we refer to him, Joseph. Who knows how many times you say, Jesus, Mary, Joseph, Jesus, Mary, Joseph. You see? Why? Because they, we are familiar with them. I know there is the saying in English, familiarity brings contempt. Yes, but familiarity can bring also a greater in, intimate mutual love as well, as well. So, Jesus, uh, what I have been saying is, I have Jesus, Mary, and Joseph as the saints par excellence, in French we say, which means uh, more than all other saints. Eh? Par excellence, for me and for you probably as well. Uh, Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, the sacred family. All right? Jesus is my savior and our savior. Mary is my mother and our mother, and Joseph happens to be my patron saint. My parents named me after him. They did well, they did well. But even if they hadn't called me for after Saint Joseph, all right, no problem. But then I have three other saints. Now, what I can say about myself, probably you can say it about yourselves as well. I am just op opening my heart with you. But, so, I have three other saints to whom I have great devotion. These are Saint John Bosco, Saint George Preca, and Saint Pius of Petrecina. How have I ended up having these three particular and special saints for me, of course? So, when I was young, about 10 years old, I saw a film, a movie, about the life of St. John Bosco. It was entitled Don Bosco, just Don Bosco. A film, it was black and white, in black and white. And it was released in 1935, 1935. After seeing it, remember I was 10 years old only, after seeing it, I remained so impressed by it that I have remained intimately drawn to St. John Bosco all my life. And I am still to date, so much so that in order to spread the word of God on the internet, as I am doing now, 
I chose the life of St. John Bosco. Over a period of years, I bought and borrowed several books on his life and learned more about him. But I have never read or heard the episodes that I myself am recounting in these weekly videos in Maltese and English. So Don Bosco made me a Salesian in spirit. Another saint who is special to me is Saint George Preca. Saint George, eh? his surname was Preca, P-R-E-C-A, Preca, who was the priest I got to know since I was a child because I attended catechism lessons in one of the centers he set up. Saint George Preca is the first and only Maltese canonized saint. Canon we have another Maltese saint, Saint Publius, but the one that welcomed Saint Paul when, came, when Saint Paul came to Malta. You can find the narration in the Acts of the Apostles at the end of chapter 27 and the beginning of chapter 28. But that is not a canonized saint for us. As a canonized saint, we have only one to date, Saint George Preca. So, his society is called Society of Christian Doctrine, but commonly known, if you were to ask people, eh, the men in the street, they would tell you, not Society of Christian Doctrine, but he, they would say Museo, Museo in Maltese, Museo, but it's written, as we write, Museum in English, eh? but it is at the same time an abbreviation, abbreviation, M-U-S-E-U-M. -E now, museum is the purpose, not the name of the society that St. George Preca set up, is the purpose, the aim, eh? the scope. And so what does museum mean? First of all, it is an abbreviation in Latin. M Magister, Magister, U Utinam, S Sequatur, in the subject, subjunctive form in Latin, for those of you who know Latin, Latin, Sequatur, Evangelium Universus Mundus. So what does it mean? That is the purpose of the society. Magister, M. Master, teacher, utinam wood, that universus mundus, the last two words, UM, the whole world, would that the whole world, sequatur, follow, evangelium, the gospel. That is the purpose of this society, set up by the first and only canonized Maltese saint. Now, When I grew up then, so when I was young, I got, I got to know about him. Then when I grew up, I was 16 years old, 18 years old. When I grew up then, I started going to his fortnight sermons. His sermon lasted one hour. He was never tired of speaking about God. His sermon lasted one hour. And I noticed two things in his sermons. The importance he gave to the grace of God, to the grace of God, eh? God's grace, and to the presence of the Most Holy Trinity. These two things were for him marvelous. God's grace and the presence, God's presence, God's presence. 
which in fact was also present before him all the time. Now, something that belonged to me or happened to me. On the 17th of February, 17th of February, 2001, in 2001, Saint George, George, Father George Preka, because he was still Father George Preka at that time, he was not yet beatified. He was beatified in the same year, but later on. But on, in, on the 17th of February 2001, he was still a servant of God. He was not yet beatified. On the 17th of February 2001, God, God, in his providence, gave me a great and special grace that I too, like Father George Prega, eh? but I am calling him Father George, eh? and in a familiar way I can call him just George as well. I, like Father George, would have the presence of the Most Holy Trinity always before me, day and night. And this grace is based on the example of Don George. In Maltese we call it Don George. In Italian we refer Father Don. That's why we say Don Bosco, Father Bosco. In Maltese, Don is Don, D-U-N, Don, Father, Don George. In Maltese, in Malta, eh, all, every person called him Don George, Don George, when he was still alive. So, God, in his providence, gave me a, this great and special grace too, like Don George, like Father George, to have the presence of the Most Holy Trinity always before me, day and night, even now, I am thinking of what I am going to tell you, but the presence of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit is very powerful before me, very powerful. And um, that's why I start my videos in the presence of the Most Holy Trinity. I say that not just a routine, as a routine or just to say something to begin my talk, but it's something that I am experiencing, that I am living. Even at night, when I wake up, the first thought, the Most Holy Trinity, the Most Holy Trinity. And normally I smile, even sometimes in, interiorly, in my heart, to the Most Holy Trinity. And that would be the highest grade of contemplation of God. That's why I am speaking of an intimate union with God, not perfect union, perfect union in heaven only. I have in another video spoke about that, but I am not going to uh, enter into this point today. So, as you well know, I begin so each of my videos by mentioning the presence of the Most Holy Trinity. For me, so as I'm telling you, this is a reality that I am constantly living. Then I have another saint because I told you eh, I have three specials. I have Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. Eh? And then I have uh, Saint John Bosco, Saint George Preca, and now I have the third one as well. And you understood why? Since my childhood practically, Saint John Bosco and Saint George Preca were were my, my uh, favorite saints to some extent. George Preca was, not a, was still living while I was young, so he was not yet a saint. But I was, I knew, I knew him well, eh? I knew him well. So now I am passing to the third saint now. What shall I say about him? This is Saint Pius, Saint Pius, of Petregina, Padre Pio. In the case of Don Bosco and Father George, Preca, <clears throat> I looked for them, I looked for them. 
In the case of Padre Pio, Saint Pius of Petrangina, he looked for me, he looked for me, he is hearing me and seeing me as well at this time, and brought me from the Most Holy Trinity a great special spiritual grace, a great special spiritual grace one of the greatest one of the greatest spiritual graces that god can give to a person who is still living in the world and not just he got me this grace and according to padre pio not i am saying he told me so he spoke to me in Maltese. <clears throat> and according to Padre Pio, I will, not I shall, I will continue to enjoy this grace forever. Because of this, all hell is enraged against me, or rather against God's grace in me. Now, it sometimes happens that some difficulties crop up quickly, something that happens to one and all. And I call Padre Pio for help, but I don't call him Saint Pius or Saint Pio, nor Padre Pio, but just Pio, Pio, Pio. That's why I mentioned the fact that saints are our brothers and sisters. We can call them how we call our brothers and sisters, and how they were called by those who lived with them. And finally, I would like to pass on to you another message on saints. Perhaps it's a thorny I can't say, a, I, can't, I don't say a problem, but, but perhaps a thorny thought, a thorny idea. But still, from experience, from experience I am talking. And if you disagree with it, please comment. I like, I like your comments. <clears throat> but I would like to understand it well. And first and foremost, I hope that I explain it well to you because probably you never heard, heard it, and you, have, you have never heard it. I know that you pray a lot to saints for help. This is clear, is it? If you need something, you can refer your need to a particular saint. You lose something, and you refer to Saint Anthony to help you to find it. Eh? It means we refer to saints, so that saints help us. We ask saints to intercede for us before God. So we pray to saints to help us. Now I am reversing the purpose of prayer. Not that saints may help us, but that we may help them. And I am speaking about saints who are in heaven not saints who are on earth. On earth there are many saints, even today. Eh? You will be sure of that. God never leaves the world without saints. Today, every person who is in the state of grace is a saint. Eh? And saints are made here on earth, not in heaven. In heaven they are confirmed. If you are not a saint here on earth, you won't become a saint in heaven. But now I am referring to not saints on earth, but saints that are in heaven. Eh? That saints are in heaven. And of course, <clears throat> the saints in heaven, every, pers every, every person who are, I mean, every person who is in heaven <clears throat> is a saint. Before I spoke about over 7,000 7, saints, but those are canonized or blessed. Besides that, there are millions and millions of 
people in heaven that they are all saints. Now, I am speaking about these saints that now, while I am speaking, they are in heaven already. They are in heaven. Perhaps even some of them cannot. As a matter of fact, not perhaps, some of them are canonized by the church. So, <clears throat> let me explain the point clearly. We pray to saints to help us. And you agree with that. Now, I am reversing the purpose of prayer. Not that saints may, may help us, but that we may help them, those saints that are in heaven now, that they are canonized as well, including those canonized, that we are helping them now with our prayers. So, do we ever pray for the saints that are in heaven so that we help them? Not we get help from them, but that we pray to God for them. Some might think this is a heresy. Yes, it is, if you misunderstand it. Now, let me explain, let me explain how interesting God is and his saints and speaking about God and speaking to God. <clears throat> let me, I am seeing how to explain it what is heresy and what is not. Saints are in heaven. They are enjoying the beatific vision of the Most Holy Trinity. You agree with that? They love God with perfect love. They have perfect union with God. This union, the saints that are in heaven, cannot increase nor decrease. That's why they have a perfect union with God. Eh? Here on earth, what we can have, what, what we can arrive at is a, an intimate union with God, but that can continue to grow. In heaven, there is perfect union with God, so their love for God cannot decrease or increase in heaven now. So the, you might ask, but what's the purpose then to pray for them if they can't grow in their love? Let me explain. So, saints love God with perfect love. They have perfect union with God. This union cannot increase nor decrease, let alone, let alone finish. So, it's useless to pray for saints that are already in heaven, it's useless or useful. This is the point. Is it useless to pray to help saints who are in heaven today, now, while I, while I am speaking? Or useful? Now, let's turn the page. All saints in heaven once lived on earth. You agree with that? All saints who are in heaven, one day, were living here on earth. Good. We agree with that. Now, when they were in the world, they needed someone to pray for them. Also, we, sometimes some people speak to me or contact me somehow, and they tell me that they are praying for me, and I tell you I am always thrilled when someone tells me that they are praying for me, the saints were glad when somebody told them that they were praying for them. Then their, their final day arrived and passed on to eternity, to eternal life. So you agree and we all agree on this point. We need to know, we need to know, and if we know to remember that for us, human beings here on earth, we have three tenses. We have the past, from yesterday and so on, present, today, now, and future, what would happen tomorrow and the day after and so on. Eh? Past, present and future. Well, something that we 
That's why we have the three tenses in, 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 in our languages. Yeah. When we refer to the past, to the present, and, and to the future. But for God, this is what we need to remember, whose life is eternal, without beginning and without end. There is no past nor future. For God, there is only the present. Everything is present. What happened at the beginning of the world and what will happen at the end of the world before God is present. Present. And I think now you are getting more understanding more my point. So, when the saints, who are in heaven now, when the saints lived in the world and they needed someone to pray for them, God knew that Joe's are meat, and it can apply also to any one of you who does it, that Joe's are meat. So many hundreds and maybe thousands of years dance from that time onward, would pray for these saints. Therefore, God gave them more graces and increased their love that the saints, the saints had for God when they were still living on earth, even though Joseph Mead and any one of you would pray for them so many hundreds and thousands of years after they passed away. Are you understanding the point so? Before God, everything is present. The saints, they are in heaven now. They lived here, let's say here, in the past. They lived here. God knew when they were living that one day, Joseph Mead and any one of you would be praying for these saints. And he gave them the grace, following my prayers. He gave them the grace, not now when they are in heaven, but when they were still living on earth. And now I think this point is clear enough. God is eternal, and he who loves God, especially those who love him with perfect love, live in eternity, even here on earth, because God would, give, would be in them, and they in him continuously. Whoever has any difficulty with what I am saying can ask me. I always answer your questions as clearly as possible and according to your needs. You can also share your opinion on what I am saying. We can learn much from each other and grow in our perfect love of God together. You can also post the prayer you like most, even if invented by yourself. Everyone knows how to post the message on this video of mine or in any other video that I have already published. Now I shall pass on to Saint John Bosco. I have called today's video Saint John Bosco and an accountant. An accountant. You know what an accountant is. In May 1883, 1883, May, the month of May, a French woman made her way to a crowd of people around St. John Bosco. She saw, she knew there was St. John Bosco. Of course, wherever St. John Bosco was, he was always surrounded by people. And she wanted to come as near as possible to him. She, so somehow she succeeded to arrive near him with great difficulty. So she managed to approach him. 
As soon as she stood in front of him, she regretfully told him how her son, who was an accountant in a French government office, had been arrested, along with other accountants, on suspicion of embezzlement and put behind bars that is sent to prison. As you well know, embezzlement is a crime in our criminal law, of course. We find it practically in every, in every country. Eh? The, the, the crime, the criminal offense of embezzlement, misappropriation, when you have something that belongs to the government, say, and instead of using it as you should, eh, you make some fraud somehow. You use it for your benefit or for the benefit of somebody else. That is embezzlement. It's a particular criminal offense. So, as you all know, so it is. This is a crime in all in all countries. Eh? And if the accused is convicted that is found guilty, you know, that whenever there is a case uh, in our criminal courts, when a person is accused of something, of some offense, of, of some crime, eh, he can either be convicted, found guilty, or acquitted if there are no proofs. Uh, the, the, the accused would be acquitted in that case. So, all right, very good. Now, I'm not going to speak about law here now, which is not the case. So, as I have said, in law, embezzlement or misappropriation is the unauthorized and unlawful use of funds or are there any other property, for that matter, that, than that for which it intended. <clears throat> His criminal case, so this woman's son, his criminal case was due to be heard in June, all right? So she met Don Bosco in May, and the case had to be heard before the magistrate, or as you know, in this case, and uh, in June, the, the month after, one month after. But St. John Bosco told her, but what can I do? Remember, he is in France, and that woman, with great confidence in St. John Bosco. See how influential Don Bosco was and how popular he was, but not in vain. There were reasons, eh? as I every now and then I tell you in, in these videos. Uh, he was a great benefactor of young people, especially uh, orphans. Uh, he was a saint. He worked many miracles. He helped people in different ways, and so on and so forth. Now, see what this moment, Don Bosco is in France. He's not in Italy. He's in France and uh, in Paris. And he told her, hey, what, what, what can I do? Her, your son has been, uh, has been accused, or better, is going to be accused, because his case was not yet heard. He was going to be accused of uh, embezzlement. Don Bosco, I thought, what can I do? And that woman, with great confidence in St. John Bosco, told him, yes, yes, you can do a lot. You can free my son from conviction and imprisonment, if you want. <coughs> and St. John Bosco said to her, but I am not God, the Almighty. And that mother said again, Yes, yes, you can do whatever you want. Please, I sorrowfully ask you to release my son. And Don Bosco explained to her his difficulty. He told her calmly, if I were in Italy, I would know some people to whom I would, I would recommend your case, especially when you are telling me that he hasn't misappropriated any government funds and there is only suspicion about him. But here in France, I don't know anyone. That French woman 
told him, have mercy on me, help me, you can help me, and you can help me a lot. And here St. John Bosco asked her which prayers she knew. Then he told her to say those prayers every day until the day of the hearing of the case. And the French mother immediately told him, yes, yes, I will say these prayers most heartily. And Don Bosco, with his angelic smile, said to her, very well then, you will pray, and you will pray very heartily. I shall also pray for the release of your son. And that mother, consoled by Don Bosco, said to him, Obtain for us the grace of my son's acquittal. Acquitted, that he would be acquitted, set free, not found guilty. And here St. John Bosco went on to say, Prayer alone is not enough. Something more is needed. And that mother, a little surprised, said to him, Tell me, tell me, yes, tell me. And Don Bosco told her, We need also a good confession and a good communion. And here that French woman told him, I haven't been to confession for 30 years. Imagine, eh? living in sin for 30 years. But I promise, she told him, I promise to do what you are telling me and whatever else you can suggest. And St. John Bosco told her, so I tell you that something else is missing. In the future, be a practicing Catholic always. A practicing Catholic. Go to Mass regularly. Approach the sacrament of confession and, <clears throat> and receive Jesus in the Holy Eucharist. And that mother's response was, yes, yes. I promise you that I will practice my religion. And St. John Bosco ended up telling her, if you do everything I have told you, pluck up your courage and see that you have great confidence in the Lord. Then Don Bosco put his hand in his pocket and took out a few medals of Mary Help of Christians and gave one medal to that woman, saying, this is for you. Then he gave her another medal, saying, this is for your son. And then he gave her another medal, but this time he didn't tell her for whom. That woman was a little surprised that he gave her the third medal and did not tell her for whom the third medal was. But in her heart, she began to think there is nothing hidden from Don Bosco. He knows everything. He knows that at home there is my husband as well. So the third medal was intended for him. Her husband, like her, had not gone to confession and communion for many years. With these thoughts in mind, she returned, she returned home. But at the same time, she was optimistic that her son would be released. As she entered home, she called her husband, talked to him about the meeting she had with St. John Bosco, and narrated in detail their conversation they had together. She also mentioned the prayers he told her. He told her to say, of course, until the day of the hearing of the case. She also told him that Don Bosco had asked her to go to confession and to continue practicing the Catholic religion. And she also told him that in the end, he gave her three medals, one for her, one for her son and the other for him. And at that time, that woman gave her husband the medal 
of mere help of Christians. She told him, Don Bosco did not tell me for whom the third medal was, but Don Bosco is a saint. He knows everything. He knows that at home there is my husband too and that you need this medal. So the third medal is surely for you. And here her husband said to her, very good, also I will go to confession and receive Jesus in the Holy Eucharist. That French woman was full of joy and enthusiasm when she heard her husband telling her that he too was going to confession and receive communion. She bore in mind what a wonderful meeting she had, she had had with St. John Bosco. Here I would like to point out the great and good influence Don Bosco had on that woman and her husband. A holy man influences others for good. Therefore, a priest, a priest, does not go to heaven alone. With him, he takes many souls. And a priest does not go to hell alone. With him, he takes many souls. As a matter of fact, that woman and her husband continue to go to mass, confession and communion regularly. And God bless them greatly. In June, that is the following month, she met Don Bosco in May. 1883, 1883, in June, the day of the trial, eh, of the hearing of the case, arrived. On that day, their son appeared in court before the magistrate. The case was decided. Their son was acquitted, while the other accountants were all found guilty of theft, misappropriation, embezzlement and were awarded a sentence to imprisonment each. On June 20, 28th of June, on the same year, on, and this, in the same month of the case, eh, on the 28th of June, 1883, that is, this French family, now father, mother and son, who have had been released, were not happy to thank God only in Paris, but went to Turin, as they had made a vow. And there they thanked God and Our Lady in her sanctuary of Valdocco, dedicated to Mary, help of Christians. You who are listening and me, one day in heaven together shall be, always by the power of God's grace.